Hey, it's Fiona again, and it's Friday, July 9th. I'm making this video from the same spot that I did uh, a week and a half ago during the peak of the heat wave. And we're back at the beach to look at how many of the creatures here died and how many of them survived. So as I mentioned, the Harley Lab, our lab studies life in the intertidal. Um, and we've been studying the beaches throughout the Salish Sea and the Strait of Georgia to understand how the heat wave affected them. Um, so last time I was here, it was really stinky. There was a lot of freshly dead mussels. Um, and now we're out. This time I've laid out this uh, transect line here. You can see the measuring tape on the beach. And then I'm counting how many mussels have survived and died within this quadrat. Um, so here we can see this particular square, the quadrat, had a lot of dead mussels, all of these ones with empty shells, um, and not so many alive ones. Uh, which was the general pattern on the beach. Not surprising, that's what we were kind of expecting to see. Um, but we just wanted to gather that more quantitative numerical data so that we can really tally up the number. Um, my supervisor has estimated roughly that around a billion animals died in the Salish Sea um, because of the heat wave. So that is definitely going to have an effect on how these ecosystems, these intertidal ecosystems, respond. Um, going forward, if we continue to get these heat waves every summer, it's going to affect, have quite a strong effect on what can live here. So again, I encourage you to go out to your beaches and see what, um, what survived and died, and to really think strong about how you can contribute to climate change mitigation and reducing emissions so that we can help all of the life on this planet that's more than just the humans. Okay, thanks.